I'm Ron Seabor. I'm a carpenter, a blacksmith, and a historic preservationist. And I also really like history. And I particularly enjoy making history come alive when I demonstrate blacksmithing for the public. Of course, when I'm demonstrating and interpreting the most noble of all the trades, I try to use cultural references that my audience will understand. However, a few years ago, I began to notice that my Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner cartoon reference frequently failed. Kids were no longer familiar with the anvil. And what I discovered was that kids weren't watching the Looney Tune cartoons anymore. And I found myself with a challenging conundrum. But recently, that all changed. All of a sudden, all the grade school boys knew exactly what an anvil was. And they all wanted to know if I made armor and swords. Turns out, there was a new and popular game they were playing called Minecraft. It's a game where they had to build things, and one of the tools they used was an anvil. Who knew? All of that is to say, it's important that we use terms that our younger audiences comprehend. Let me give you another example of what I mean. It has to do with an ice pick. Last winter, I took a class in dry point printing. It's an ancient process where you scratch an image onto a copper plate and use it to make a print. Ooh. Our talented instructor was walking around providing everyone with delightful criticism when he spied my work and asked, that looks great, Ron. What did you draw that with? An ice pick, I declared. He looked at me and asked, an ice what? I responded, you don't know what an ice pick is? To which he said, Nope. Well, was my ego ever deflated? I remember thinking to myself, why would my young friend know what an ice pick is? I suspect all he's ever had to do was take a glass and stick it in the door of the refrigerator. I doubt he's ever filled up an ice tray to put it in the freezer. And I'm certain he's never worked a block of ice with a pick. But once upon a time, the ice pick was a staple in every home an icon advertising everything from banks to hardware stores. This pointed piece of metal with its wooden handle was as ubiquitous as the cell phone is today. As I contemplated my induction into the Old Timers Hall of Fame, I reflected on my first memory involving an ice pick. When I was about five or six years of age, my neighborhood friends and I would run barefoot to catch the milkman as he made his daily rounds. From the back of that truck, he would give us chips of ice that he broke off that huge frozen block with a big shiny pick. Not only did that ice keep his products cold, it helped us kids to endure the hottest days of summer. Ice wasn't always the simple convenience it is today. My great aunt Lily used to tell me how in the early part of the 20th century, she and her brothers would stock up on ice at their farm. In the middle of a Nebraska winter, they would saw blocks of ice from a nearby frozen river and then haul that ice in a horse-drawn wagon back to the ice cave near the farm. In a good year, they would have enough ice to last them to the 4th of July. And having ice on the 4th was really important because without it, there'd be no homemade ice cream. During the 50s, my family and I would visit my grandparents during the Independence holiday. On that special day, we would break up blocks of ice with a pick and then pour the frozen shards mixed with salt into a wooden hand-cranked ice cream machine. After putting a folded burlap bag on top of it all, my sister and I would take turns sitting on the machine to hold it steady while simultaneously turning the crank. As we froze our bottoms, we dreamed of the delicious treat that would soon be ours to eat. On the other hand, my great-grandfather, William, realized that making homemade ice cream for his 18 children was a lot of hard, hot work. So even during the Depression years, he figured it was easier to simply go to the creamery and buy a five-gallon tub to celebrate the day. And now that I think about it, mixing and cooking up all those ingredients, breaking up the ice with a pick, cranking the machine, and cleaning up the mess really does seem to take all the fun out of it. 
So I just sent my young printmaking friend a text message. Asked him if he wanted to meet me at the parlor for some ice cream. Oh, and that's him now. Excuse me. Ron, I'd love to get ice cream with you, but what's a parlor? <laughs>